Hey there, fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're going to be answering some of your travel questions. So please put in the comments below, or actually I should say put in the chat on the side or below, however you're watching, and we'll get to your questions today. Uh, a topic I want to kind of uh, go over while we're going through today's uh, chat is some budget tips. I've seen we put out a really big budget tip video this morning. It was about, tw it's 20 minutes long, so it's long. But honestly, it's got my best collection of budget tips for how you can save money when you travel, you know, how to save more money while you do travel, all kinds of stuff out there. And some things you might not think about. So if you haven't watched that video, do go watch it. That is a really good video. It's called, uh, I think, something like Rookie Travel Mistake or budget Rookie Travel Budget Mistakes. Really one of the videos I'm really proud of. I really hope you'll take a look at it because it can really help you save some money when you do travel because – as many times as you hear all those blogs and videos saying, you can travel the world for free. No, you can't. It's total BS. You have to pay. But there's ways you can do it so it's not going to be destroying your budget, okay? So we're going to go through a few of those things today. But I was going to say hi to everybody that's on here. Van City, good to see you. Brian Hunter. Oh, yeah, I was just good to see you. Hitting tax 26. Okay. <laughs> Hitting tax 26. Let's really elaborate on the, uh, the Guadalajara video. I'll, I'll get to that one eventually. Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't know if, this, I don't know if today is going to have time for that. But uh, anyway, I want to go through some of the things we're going to talk about because I really think there's 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 small things you can do to save money while you travel. But then there's like bigger ticket items where it really makes a bigger impact because, yes, you know, lunch menus are cheaper than dinner menus. I can save you a few money, a few dollars here and there. And a free breakfast here can save you some money. But there's really bigger things out there. And a lot of it – Actually, it's in transportation. And, and one thing I want to tell people is, honestly, you want to make sure you're looking around for the best flights for you. Because I know we all kind of give our airlines. Like you all know, I, I, I love Delta. We fly Delta almost exclusively. But we don't fly it all the time. Um, because sometimes what you have to realize is even if you're getting points, it might be nice to get points. But points are only worth so much. And if you're seeing that your Delta flight or your American flight or your British Airway flights – is two or three or four hundred dollars more than a flight with another airline? Is that really economic sense? Because spending the extra four hundred dollars, so what if you get you know ten thousand miles? That that ten thousand miles is not worth four hundred dollars, and that's one thing you have to think about, especially if you're family traveling. Make sure you use sites like Kayak and Skyscanner and things like that to kind of look for other options for other airlines that are flying to your destination. Okay, so and the thing is, if you're going to use, if you're going to be buying tickets, one thing I always say to people is this. Make sure you book direct with the airlines because if you go through a third party, there, if there are issues, you are the one that's the kind of left holding the bag because the ones that directed and bought directly with the airlines, they get a um, little bit more preferential treatment than third party people and trying to get refunds. It's easier to talk to dire Delta directly than have to go through Expedia or Kayak or somebody else. Okay, so that's one of those money things I think is really important because I see people that are like, no, I only stay, at, and, and this is not just uh, flights, yeah, this could be hotels. I only stay at Marriott's, I only stay at Hilton's. Well, what bonuses are you really getting? You know, if it takes so, if it takes you, you know, 100,000 miles to get a flight, well, that's 10 times to Europe. I mean, is it really going, you're going to really get the, the benefit out of that? And I see that in hotels as well, you know, especially around the US, you have a lot of the, the frequent visitor passes and, and stuff, which are cool. And I, I do that as well. And remember, believe me, anytime you're going to be staying someplace and they have a rewards program, you should really, really sign up. Okay. Cause you never know. It could be, you get priority check-in. It could be, you get free water. It could be free Wi-Fi, free breakfast. There could be something there, or they give you deals during different times of the year. It does pay off. If you think, well, I'm not going to come back here very often. You know what? You, you don't want to pass up that chance. Cause I've seen some places for example, you want that free Wi-Fi on Delta, you have to have a Delta number, right? So you have to think about these kind of things. But honestly, I, I've seen people spending way too much money because, oh, Marriott, I want my Marriott points. Yeah, but you just spent $400 more a night to stay there than if you would have stayed someplace else, and you're just going to be sleeping in this place. So something to kind of think about because that, those two things right there, the flights and the hotels, right there is going to save you way more money than – eating a, a cheaper lunch or, or you know, you're not getting the Starbucks when you want it, you know, like those are $5 savings. And these, you know, choosing these things right can be $500 savings. So something to kind of think about if you're looking at that, because I think that's a really big, really big money thing that people don't, don't really think about it. And also when we're looking at all those points and all those miles people collect, you have to use them. 
Because, I mean, I can tell you, I remember when I first started traveling back in the 90s, you know, 50,000 miles would get you to Europe, round trip. Now 50,000 miles, I mean, it won't even get me from like Chicago to New York, you know? So you got to use those because what's the point of having a million miles if you don't use them? And probably your best way to use those are upgrades when you're going to be flying. And you don't have to upgrade the entire flight. You can choose different sections. So it might be you just want to upgrade to a business class or a Comfort Plus or something from I don't know, Atlanta to London. They don't really care about the Peoria to you know Chicago flight kind of connections. Okay, so something to kind of think about in terms of first little budget tip I want to go to. And now I'm going to go and, and answer some questions here for a bit. I see we've had a few of them pop on, a lot of, a lot of highs on there. Hey, everybody, hope you're all doing well. Hunter Ketchum, I'm traveling daily next month. Any tips for around Rome? We have tons and tons of stuff on Rome, um, videos on Rome, lots of stuff out there. One thing I'll say, um, literally, since Rome is a big city, a historic city, you really need to stay near the historic stuff. Staying out of town and at the outskirts is not worth it. You might save a little bit of money, but the time, and that's another thing when you look at it, saving also look at the time you're going to spend going out to different destinations. You're going to stay in the suburbs. It might not be worth it. So I always recommend staying in Rome, staying in town, uh, doing that. And, and know when you're looking for a place to eat, eat, if you can see a main site, don't eat there. It's going to be overpriced and under under tasty. Go like two more blocks away, three more blocks away, you'll find locals there. You'll be fine. Because if you go travel and you see a lot of people that look like you and sound like you when you're going to eat, that's a tourist restaurant. Okay, so find where the locals are and you'll hear that out there, okay? So Travel Freak 2019. Hey, Mark, what are your thoughts on the Frontier Airlines Summer Flight Pass? So for those of you that don't know, Frontier Airlines, I believe it's like 500 bucks and you get like unlimited flights. You just have to pay taxes or something um, from, I believe it's, is it May through the summer? Um, which sounds great. Sounds great. Um, one of my favorite students, she got stuck in Chicago. She was supposed to fly to Vegas and Frontier just canceled her flight. I mean, just because you had the the free flight stuff doesn't mean the flights are always going to go. Uh, but it is cool. Like if you have it and you can use it, it I think it's a really cool thing. Um, I remember last summer when Germany had the like, you know, like five Euro tickets anywhere you want to go to Germany, the trains were packed all the time, which is what they want. They want people going in frontier. I mean, they're not making their money off you buying the tickets. They're making the money off you paying for your baggage, uh, for the snacks on the plane, uh, to board earlier, to have a carry on, that's where they're making their money. So, hey, let me just get you in the door. You know, it's kind of like movie theaters. The first couple of weekends, they're not making money a lot. They're not making a lot of money off the tickets you buy. Most of their money is coming from the popcorn you're buying, right? So it's the same kind of thing there. So, Hawaiian, well, yeah, Philly's cool. I mean, you you have a good time. Go, go to the market. And it, honestly, the roast pork sandwich was way, way, way better. Hey, Nora, good to see you. Cab mom, always a pleasure. Marshall, hey, how are you? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, the, the Guadalajara, I'll, I'll make I'll make a video on that one because that one's we really have to kind of go into the entire thing from the entire story of going down to New Mexico when I was a teenager. So, uh, yeah, so some stuff. Yosef, good to see you. I haven't seen you on here for a while. I'm doing well, my friend. Thanks for saying hi. When are you going to the Dominican Republic? I just got back. Can't you tell from my... Rosy complexion. Yeah, no, we were just in the Dominican Republic. Uh, went to uh, Sona Island, Punta Cana. Just kind of like a nice chillaxing trip. It was a good time, though. People were super nice. Uh, one thing I will say, if you go to Punta Cana, your, your only options for staying basically are all-inclusives. And I, sadly, all-inclusives don't always have the all-inclusive local foods. So that was kind of a disappointment with that. But, uh, yeah, no, I was, I, was, I was sad I didn't have more Dominican food when I was there. I did have quite a bit. When we were out and about, but you know, it's one of those things. I'm like, hey, where, where's the local stuff? Let me get the good stuff. So that was one of those things there. William's heading to Ireland, uh, Ireland in May. Honestly, you'll be fine. I mean, I don't know where you are. I'm guessing if you're in the U.S., similar May temperatures like in the U.S. I would say like in the the northeast of the U.S. in May. Um, you know, a, a light rain jacket it might not rain at all when you're there, to be honest. Um, so don't don't count on rain every day, but it might. Um, when I've gone, I mean, I've gone pretty much every month to Ireland, and I've never had to have like really wintry, wintry clothes. And May, you should be okay. Well, here's one thing, William, and anybody listening on this, whenever you're going to go travel, like people like to ask me a lot, like what's the weather like in a certain month? 
Well, yes, you can go on weather.com and see the historical averages. But as we all know, like where I am now, I can walk around. Like last week, I was like in shorts and a t-shirt. And this week, I'm freezing my butt off, right? And, well, I guess last week I was wearing shorts and t-shirt because I was in the Dominican Republic. But the point is, I, this is one thing I always do. Like two days before, like when I really get like the final packing started, I will actually look at the 10-day forecast for the um, destination we're going to. and. I'll see what's it going to be. So then I know, hey, do I need the winter coat? Do I not need the winter coat? Uh, do I need to take a rain jacket? Or, or you get a better idea. So, for example, I went to England for two weeks at the beginning of the year. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, January, it could be snow. It could be cold. You know, I'm going to the north. I looked at the 10-day forecast. It didn't get within 10 degrees of freezing while I was there in the night. So I'm like, oh. So I literally left. I just put my winter coat in my in my car at the airport, put on my light jacket, my rain jacket, and did that. And I was okay, and I was better prepared for it. So something to kind of think about is just doing that, checking that 10-day forecast out till then. Ronnie Dove, eight days till Europe. Have fun, my friend. I know you will. Hey, Jim and Harriet, hope you're doing well. So Mama Bear, have you flown Ryanair for short-distance flights? Any thought, goods or bad? I've flown Ryanair a lot of times. Um, Pay the extra so you can board first because a lot of people won't pay like the extra 15 euros to board first. It saves so much hassle just so you can get up in there. Um, do know that if you think you can get in with your too big over like um, carry on luggage, they, they catch you every time and they charge you and they'll make you pa uh, check it and stuff and charge you more. I mean, they, they're one of the nickel and dime airlines. But the thing is, if you're in Europe, sometimes Ryanair is your only choice going to different places. Like I flew from Krakow to Rome, and there was no lot flight. There was no Alitalia, well, not Alitalia now, but there was no direct other direct flight. It was only a Ryanair flight. So sometimes you have to take it. So it can work. I prefer EasyJet or Vueling if I'm looking at the cheaper airlines in Europe. So uh, something there. Yes, as Cat Mom said, always 100% buy from direct from the airlines. Ah, it's I'm jumping around on me. Oh, WD, nice. Just in Galapagos Islands after an Antarctic cruise. One heck of a month for me. I hope you guys get there also. Yeah, so I hope so too, WD. That is that is an amazing trip. I know Galapagos, we talked with a cruise company to go there, but how, when they wanted us to go, we couldn't go because of scheduling conflicts. So we keep trying. It's like, because we had something set up, COVID happened, and we got reset up, and then schedules changed, and they had to change, and uh, haven't got there. Um, Antarctica is one. We're waiting till Liam gets older. Because he's only 11, so I, he can't really go. So it's like when he's older, then we're going to do one of those. Because that's that's the thing I want us all to go on. Um, I'm just debating if I should tell him about the, the, the Drake quake <laughs> before we go. Eee. If you're not sure what the Drake quake is, go look it up, my friends. So, Brandy, any advice going to the Philippines in June? I have not been to the Philippines. And I, I do not like giving advice to go places when I have not personally been. So, Brandon, I'm sorry I don't have anything for the Philippines. I do know... People will, I, I've seen a number of travel bloggers and vloggers who have gone to the Philippines because, oh my goodness, the flights are so cheap right now, but they went during monsoon season and they're like, oh, it's raining and our place is flooding and it's, oh, it's, oh, we're wet all the time. I'm like, yeah, you weren't during monsoon season. So the season you go is very important. Same thing if people are going to Southeast Asia, you got to make sure you got the right season when you're going to go. Otherwise it, it, you may save money, but it's not worth it. And that's one of those things about budgeting. Sometimes it's worth it to pay the money to go at the right time. There's a reason why you want to go like DC right now. The, the, the cherry blossoms are blooming. You want to go now, not later. So pay more now to get there now to see them, right? So that's one of those things you got to think about. And thank you very much for the super chat, Brandon. I do appreciate that. Cheapest airport to fly into, into Germany from the U.S. Frankfurt's going to be your cheapest uh, then, then Munich, those will be your two cheapest ones. Um, I know there are some flights into Berlin. There's some into Dusseldorf. Um, I don't know if there's any other ones going into Germany from the U.S. So, AFH, any thoughts on Utrecht? Is a less yes, Utrecht is great. We stayed there before. I will stay there again next time I go. Like Utrecht and Harlem, my two places I recommend. If you're going to go to Amsterdam and you don't want to deal with the craziness at night, stay in Utrecht or stay in Harlem. You will have a Dutch experience with Dutch people and without the insanity and you'll have the same feel and canal. It just, I like them both, but Utrecht, I like Utrecht better. So yeah, you'll be fine when you're there. 
So Ryan wants to know, is it safe to travel outside the resorts in Mexico? I want to experience authentic Mexican culture. And I feel like that's not on the resort. No, it is not on the resort. You will not have it at the resort. No. You will actually have to ask the, the people working, is there any actual Mexican food here that I would like to have? That would be something you would eat. And sometimes that doesn't happen. So you can go off. Um, you do need to, I mean, I would definitely talk to your resort because they can schedule guides that will take you around. I mean, it depends where you're going to be. Like Cancun, Cancun does have some issues now. you got to be careful. But as long as you're back before dark, usually you're fine. That's why a lot of people do excursions during the day. So you have that. Mark Finley. Well, you have yourself a wonderful dinner, my friend. I appreciate you hopping on. Oh, my. Lots and lots of questions here. <laughs> oh, okay. It just jumped over, all over the place for me. Jim and Harriet, thank you very much. Harriet and I are attending a wedding in L.A. tomorrow. It's snowed in Hollywood Hills. Go figure. I know. I've been seeing I, a friend of ours um, were posting pictures of the snow in Las Vegas, and now there's a blizzard warning, I think, in L.A. right now. I mean, it's a crazy world. Y'all be safe, okay? Have fun at the wedding. I hope you brought, like, an extra jacket, too. Okay, so be careful, Harriet. Jim, all right? And thank you very much for the Super Chat, guys. I appreciate it. Let's see. Oh, Jamonte, thank you very much. I appreciate the super sticker. I know it doesn't show up right there, but I appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. I hope you're doing well. So Tyler wants to know, Mark, you ever create a Don'ts of Visiting Hershey, Pennsylvania, or Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? So I do not have one of those. I do have a Don'ts of Philadelphia, and I have a Don'ts of Pittsburgh that I have, but I can't find it on my computers because I got a new computer and everything decided to upload everything to OneDrive, but it doesn't actually have enough space, so the videos aren't there. So I'm trying to find where my Don'ts of Pittsburgh video is. Right now it's scheduled to come out, I think, right after – St. Patrick's Day um, is when it's supposed to come out on a Wednesday. The Wednesday after St. Patrick's Day. That's when it's supposed to come out. Uh, but I have to find it. That's the problem. So when I have that, then we'll have those there. I do have my script for the don'ts of Pennsylvania overall and for, I think, an eats of Pennsylvania. Um, but I did not get them excuse me, filmed on my last trip because we ended up just having a good time with Tom Shaner. one of our super, one of our fans here, another fellow traveler. So we had a good time in Pittsburgh and, Having a good time over, over did the, uh, the the filming time sometimes. Ooh. Hogtown Biker, thank you very much for the super chat. Planning on Tanzania and Uganda in September. Places to go or avoid. Uganda, you need to be a little more careful than in Tanzania. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but Tanzania, I mean, obviously Serengeti National Park, you got to go there. But there's a lot of other really great things to see. Uh, the, the Fertile Crescent, you know, where it's like, oh, this is where mankind came from phenomenal like just phenomenal you're gonna see so much nature there people are super friendly uh you get some decent food too uganda i have not been in personally so i can't give you any, i'm not i won't give you anything for that because i don't have personal experience i don't feel comfortable giving advice when i don't have personal experience but yeah tanzania i would go back in a heartbeat no questions asked people were super friendly in tanzania like su tanzania okay tanzania you hear that uh they were they were awesome they were unbelievably awesome so yeah ah Oh, Nazia, first international trip with a toddler. He can handle a six-hour flight. Tips, best countries to go to. So, Nazi, we actually just did – why are my notes? I think Jocelyn, Jocelyn took my notes. She has she has our notes on uh, tips for flying with travels. Oh, I might actually have it in here because, you know, OneDrive has all our stuff. Toddler. Oh, dang, it's on the other computer. So, some tips for flying with toddlers. And thank you very much for the super chat. Um, so one, if you want, if you sit in the back of the plane, like near the back, the hum of the engines and the vibration helps them sleep a little bit better. Um, also, it helps uh, control the ruckus noise that might come from them. Also, you're near the bathrooms if you're potty training at toddler age. That might make it a little bit easier for you. So that's one thing you can think about. Another thing we always did is we always had a backpack that was just theirs. Just one of their little backpacks. And you don't want to lose their favorite toys, so you got to be careful with this. But, like, we would go to the dollar store with them and let them pick out store, toys at the dollar store. So they'd have, like, little tiny leg, like the, the generic Legos, generic army men kind of stuff. And so they would play with those in the plane. They lost them, no big deal. But we'd always have, like, bl Blue Blanky for Liam. We always have Blue Blanky, you know, with that because he'd travel with that. He'd sleep with that. 
Um, another thing is if they're still on the if they're on the bottle or pa pacifiers, or you're you're trying to wean them off. Let them have a takeoff landing because the air pressure it's going to hurt their ears. Uh, so be careful with that. Um, what else? Do not give them orange juice when they come by. Give them apple juice. Orange juice actually dehydrates them. So apple juice would be a better choice if you're trying to get a drink for them when you're there. So Nazia, you'll have a good time. You'll, you'll remember those great times. Um, our boys did pretty good. Um, actually, if you're going to get them their own seat, I would have their car seat. Take that with you. I know it's a pain in the butt sometimes. Uh, go, go babies. Um, it's a little telescopic handle you put in the back of the, the car seat and just drag them around. That's pretty nice there. So, uh, yeah, so I hope those are some helpful tips for you. Brandon, can you explain the ETIS? Uh, I'm so confused. So we do have a video that explains this. So those you don't know, ETIAS, that is going to be the – and people get mad at me. It's not a visa. Yeah, it's not a visa. It's a visa waiver. But you still have to fill out forms and stuff. But they're like, it's not a visa. I'm like, whatever. You know. Um, basically, what you have to do is you put in your passport information, your, your first destination – you're going to Europe and it's valid for, I think, three years at a time. It's, it's, I don't know, I think it's like $8. It doesn't cost very much. Um, right now, it's technically supposed to go into effect in November. Um, however, it's been pushed back so many times. I've actually filmed the video three times. And the third time, I was like, screw it. I'm just going to put it out. And then I ended up like, it changed again. And then I just put a little thing over and say, look, the thing keeps changing. Um, so I wouldn't, you don't have to worry about it this summer, but you will need to do it. It has to be, I think, at least 72 hours before you depart, because usually it only takes about five minutes for it to be okay. But if there's any issues, then you can you can appeal, and they have an appeal process. So so there is that. Okay. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. Ah. So what you all see over here is or down there is different. What I see, and mine's just like jumping all over the place. So good to see people on there. Eric B. I here's in the house. Um, Addy B. Asked about Egypt. Um, <laughs> another one that got nailed because of COVID. Uh, we are planning to be there. Um, if I can get it this summer, we'll do it. But I don't know if we have enough time because we've got other – we've got Israel, Jordan, Greece, Portugal, Spain, Andorra. Um, where else do we have? We have a few other places. And so I don't know if we have time to get there this summer. But I know next summer, like 2024, I know Egypt is a definite. So so we'll we'll be there for that. Oh, gentlemen. oh, sorry, my message didn't go through. I'm planning a safari trip to Johannesburg in May for my 50th birthday. That's awesome. You have a great Kruger National Park. It's incredible. Um, safety will be an issue. So make sure when you're looking at the safari trips and stuff, like, well, the safari, you don't have to worry so much about the safety. But like on your other things you're going to do when you're in South Africa, safety is going to be a big thing. So reading the reviews are really key. Uh, we use a company called Shadows of Africa for Tanzania and, and Rwanda. But I think they're more they're more East Africa. They have some stuff down there. I don't they go all the way south. South Africa, but they were fantastic. Um, that would be one to check out. But yeah, you have a great time and happy early birthday, my friend. Thanks, Tommy. I love you too. Dudley, hey Dudley, do right. You have a new. Uh, you have a new uh, picture. Thank you very much for the super chat. London bound in fifty eight days. Virgin changed my layover home from two hours to fourteen. Oh. Only uh, only option offer was cancel tickets, rebook, waiting for a refund to rebook. Okay, so you're gonna rebook. All right. Cause so we have we have a flight this summer that has an eleven hour layover in uh in London. And I think Justin's gonna get a hotel and stay there for the eleven hours and I'm gonna go in and film because when I was in London filming my mistakes of London video, for some reason my camera didn't focus on me, it focused like on the, the sailboat. And so I'm all fuzzy and I'm like, oh no. And it's 4K, so it's 4K fuzzy. So you're like, dang it. So I have to go in and refilm that one. But I, I want to see if I could, if it looks okay or not. But I probably have to go back in and refilm that. So I'll be going in for that one. And that's one thing. If you're flying in with 14 hours, if you're there, if they can't get you switched, um, you can do um, – like that's enough to go into town. Like you, you'll, you'll be okay. Just make sure you're paying attention to um, the, the security lines, how long it has to go. What about Morocco? Morocco's cool. We had a great time there. Honestly, if you go there with kids, get them Hakimi jerseys. Our kids had Hakimi jerseys. Um, and he was a great soccer player from there, young guy. And, and we're walking around. And everyone's like, Hakimi, Hakimi. So we got so much free stuff for the boys. It was hilarious. Like, Morocco, we, we had a good time. Oh, my gosh. The ten jeans, the rabbit there. Oh, so good. So good. Llama Whisperer. 
the best way to bridge the language barrier with locals smile learn a few words all i do is like thank you please yes no right there they're going to be appreciative and it's going to go a lot farther i know i was in the dominican republic i mean i speak fluent spanish but just they started talking to you because you said oh you said gracias oh thank you so much i'm like yeah it's gracias i mean we all had like two years of spanish in high school everyone knows gracias and por favor they're like you'd be surprised how many u.s tourists come and don't even say you know gracias so that's sometimes it's just a simple thing like that and and, and Lama Whisper, a lot of the places I've started to make new videos on basics of languages in different countries. Like um, I have one, like there's one I have on a friend, I have French, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, German. Um, I have one for French, Can Canadian French coming out early in March. I think that's next Wednesday. Actually, yes, yeah, it's this coming Wednesday that'll come out. So there's some stuff to see that. But like, honestly, just little things. You'll be surprised how many people do speak English, but I'll, I'll tell you, I've gone to a place where no one's, we had no language, we had no language connection, but we still could have a good time together. Um, if you got kids, I'm um, actually Uno cards and a soccer ball go a long way. So hope that helps. Ibniza, thank you very much for the super chat. <clears throat> Do you have any suggestions for must see when road tripping from London? We currently have Cotswold, Bath, Stonehenge, Oxford, Edinburgh. It'll be two weeks trip this summer. That is a lot of, woo. Okay, so when you're going up, um, to Edinburgh, I would stop in York. Uh, that's because uh, that's kind of it's on the way. You can stop in York, or you know Leeds and over to York, but it's worth to go spend spend at least a full day or spend a night. I would spend a night in York. Uh, go to the Minster there, the Shambles, which is like one of the things they modeled um, uh, Diagon Alley off in the the Harry Potter movies. It's kind of a cool thing there. You can get the uh, the the, uh, the uh, hoodie wrap, the York Yorkshire hoodie wrap, where it's basically. Yorkshire pudding, roast beef, all the stuff, trimmings in there, and then they're rolled up like a British burrito, I guess some people like to call it. So there's that. Um, let's see. Oxford. So, so you're going to go this way. You can go Stratford-upon-Trent. Uh, not Stratford-upon-Trent. No. Stratford-upon-Avon uh, for the Shakespeare stuff because it's over that way. If you're driving, you can do that. And that's the thing. When you're driving, it is so easy. The locals will tell you it's so far. It's so far. If you're used to driving in the U.S., Everything is so close there. You'll be like, oh, we're already there. Oh, wow. Uh, so very, very different. So, And I do want to say thank you to everybody over in the chat. They're answering other people's questions. Like I see a lot of people giving hence uh, ideas for South Africa for that one. I really appreciate it. So that's cool. Oh, and I want to say congratulations, Timothy Kishman, because Kansas City is getting a new airport next week, I believe. Or no, this weekend. Uh, Kansas City MCI is open. They built a new airport, which is probably still MCI. Uh, but yeah, the old Kansas City airport was garbage. I'm not gonna lie, it was garbage. Um, and they built a, they built a whole new, brand new airport, like new part, everything. So that's I think opens up this this next week. So uh, that'll be kind of cool. So congrats, my friend, Connor O'Brien. Thank you very much for the super chat. Good day trips in Munich. Uh, if you're gonna do a day trips, you can go to Fusen. And uh, Fusen, Neuschwanstein Castle's there, and you have another castle there. You can go see the, you know, the, the fairy tale castle that's there, and there's another one there. But Fusen's a small town. You get off the train at there. That's kind of a cute thing to do for a, a day trip. Uh, you can go to Neuschwanstein, not Neuschwanstein. You can go to um, Nuremberg. That's a good day trip. There's a great German history museum there. Um, the, 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 the castle on the hill there is really nice as well. Uh, that's another easy one to do. You can actually go to Salzburg. You can use the Bayern ticket, the local train for five people on one ticket. You can go to Salzburg in Austria. That's probably the best day trip to go on. So there's that. Tom's Kim, thank you very much for the super sticker. I'm sorry it doesn't show up here what you asked. I apologize. Let's see. Yes, Marcus Mel advised apple juice against apple juice. It makes it go to the bathroom young. Yeah. Better off. Yes, water would be the best thing. Water is always the best thing. That's what I have right here. So yeah, so there is that. But yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with the doctor. <laughs> so Fulpke, I'm thinking about opening up in a savings a savings. Uh, my my uh, can you tell it's been – I have not been practicing my speaking lately. Got, must get my tongue going. I'm thinking about opening up a, a savings account with these online banks for my travel funds to grow. What's your opinion on these? Um, 
look at fee any bank banks is all about fees what are they going to charge you to put your put your money in put take your money out how easy is it for you to use how easy for you to get things out that's one thing you have to think about now some of them are good some of them like like because you use a paypal there's there's a middle a middleman that you have to pay and some of these ones there is no middleman it's a direct payment to people so you don't have to worry about it and therefore you save a five buck fee or something like that so something to think about becca from australia good to see you Tomskin, thank you again and for bringing up the apple juice thing. TJJ, man. Hey, Mark, I'm thinking of visiting the South, Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, come to mind. Both are great. Those are two. If you... Top four cities to visit in the South for me as a traveler. Savannah, Georgia, Charleston, South Carolina, New Orleans, Louisiana, Natchez, uh, Mississippi. Those are my four favorites. That I mean, not in that order. Savannah's my favorite because we, we go there all the time. New Orleans, the awesome city. Then Charleston, then then Natchez. Those are the ones I recommend for people to go see. Yes, I got it. I got it. I got it. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So Josh, a longtime viewer, first time commenter, glad, glad you could comment. Thanks for watching. Do you recommend renting a car in Cancun or hiring a driver? We are going to do excursions that require us to travel outside the city. So if you're doing excursions, a lot of them will have like transportation included, which just means they're going to take you to a central spot, put you on a bigger bus, take you someplace. I would just hire a driver. I mean, you don't have you can rent a car if you're the, if you're back before the end of the before dark, you're fine. Uh, but if you're, you want to be more comfortable and you want to enjoy your time and a local deal with the traffic kind of stuff, I would just hire the driver, to be honest. Ricardo Cunha, have I visited Portugal? Hmm. Yeah, I, I was in Portugal a few times. Um, I actually have my PhD from IZEG, uh, Instituto Superior de Economia e Gestão which is now part, well, at the time, it was part of the Technical University of Lisbon, which merged the University of Lisbon. So I did my PhD there. So I was five years in Lisbon. And uh, my my youngest was actually born in Lisbon. So uh, there you go. So Ryan was, no, I, there's no dumb questions. Don't worry. But if you travel to the Vatican, can you meet the Pope? So actually, there is a way you could meet the Pope. You have to talk to your priest, uh, your Catholic priest, and there's a, there's a way that you can apply to see him. Um, there's no guarantee it'll happen. If you want to see the Pope when you're there, he does have audiences where he talks to the uh, to the masses out in the the main part of St. Peter's, like in the the courtyard. So there is that. There's another one where he goes to the window and talks. So you can't see him because I've seen I've seen JP two. He and I like made eye contact. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, Ratzenberger, the the German, as the Italians called him, I saw him, and then the Argentine guy now uh, saw him as well. So I've seen them all when I've gone there. So the, the once a week, there's usually something semester twice so tyler i hope you get back to key west my friend yeah dan's right brex garden is a good day trip from munich there's a lot of good day trips from munich like that's one thing munich and what's cool is there's so many good day trips from there that are relatively close that you can actually like stay in munich and enjoy your time and go see the extra stuff and then come back that that's what i really like about it Yazers, I, first of all, say thank you. Yazer77 comments a lot, and I appreciate the fun and awesome comments you have, okay? I just want to say thank you to you. Um, so here's what. If you email Amtrak, they'll eventually answer you. I asked about the line to Montreal. Forgot what it's called, but they answered within a few weeks. <laughs> hey, it, they must have put it in an actual letter on the Amtrak train. Ding. <laughs> oh, sorry. Dudley do right. Uh, the layover is in D.C. at night. Oh, it's not in London. Oh, I thought it was in London. There was a D.C. at night on the way home. Not a place I would feel kind of walk. Yeah, no. It, yeah, there's they, it's empty. There's not like the downtown part. It's completely empty. Yeah, no. I, I would I'd rebook. I would rebook. Mark, are you going to do a travel video on Turkey or Thailand? Yes. Thailand or Southeast Asia stuff got canceled a few years ago because we had a wedding. Which was funny because it was one of those things where we we're buying the tickets like on Monday, and then we got a call that there's a wedding that we have to go to instead. So that whole summer, that was going to be a crazy summer because that was the Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Singapore trip, and Australia, New Zealand was another possibility. 
And then I'll like, we had to go to the wedding. We're actually going to go back to see them soon, actually, in Brazil. Let's see. Saskatchewan, I can get there. Top 10 things to see or do in London. I actually have a video on that. A long time ago video. Like, you'd be like, who is that guy? That young, still balding, no beard, skinnier guy. Uh, but I would say my favorite things, British Museum, fantastic and free. Tate is great to go see. Um, Tower of London is expensive, but worth going to see. Um, Change of the Guard is kind of, it's fine, but it's one of the things you should do when you're there. Eating dim sum in Chinatown, well worth doing. Um, if you go to a West End show, well worth doing. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, you got you got to see the, you know, look, kids, been been in Parliament. It's it's just one of those things you always love doing. So that's what I was saying. Thank you for the super chat, Dudley Deuteride. I appreciate it. I have a mustache productions. That is a cool I, I would love to see the logo like moving with that, like blowing in the wind. My entire life I've never felt more unwelcome than I felt when I was traveling in England. That sucks. I'm sorry. But Scotland, Wales, and Ireland were great. I know you don't like negativity, but any countries you wouldn't go back to. No, it, there's no problem. Like people can have bad experiences. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I like people to share the good and the bad. That's why we're always about honesty here. And and people, I don't always have great times. You know, I like we actually put out a video a couple weeks ago. You know, where was the friendliest and least friendly places you've ever traveled to? And like the friendliest, like I mean, we I said I mentioned Italy and Rwanda, but like other super friendly Ireland people are super friendly. U.S. Brazil people were really great, uh, but like the least friendly. Switzerland was the least friendly uh, with kids. Like people were just jerks with our kids when we were there. And our kids were good, well behaved too, which was annoying. Like that was one. Um, where else? Uh, when I took my students, um, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't take students to Belgium anymore uh, because my students were harassed so much. My my Asian American students, my African American students were harassed so much. I will not take students back to Belgium. Um, so that that that's one thing. Um, yeah. Where else? Oh, I, I said the Danish are the least friendly. Not because it's bad or they're mean. They just they don't care about you because you're a tourist. They don't live there, so you're not Danish. So who cares? So so that 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 would be another thing there. So thank you for the super chat. I hope you didn't mind my answering your questions. Excuse me, Pam. We will get there. We will get to New Zealand. Don't you worry. It, it's crazy because now it's funny because now we're we're trying to we're ramping back up in our usual travel stuff. Now that things are back to normal. So like I spent the first two weeks of january in england jocelyn spent the second like she spent 10 days in france and italy without luggage and then we came back and then we we're in arizona or we supposed to be arizona that got canceled but we were supposed to be in arizona then back and then we we're in dominican republic and then it just keeps going and going and going because now that we're getting back into this we want to get people see that hey you can travel it's okay um you have fun with it so uh so yeah oh darian good to see you my friend Luke, okay, Luke's going to Dublin, 36-hour layover. Wow, 36, you have plenty of time. Um, I know it sounds silly and it's super touristy, but I would, because first off, Trinity College, the library is closed for renovation for the next few years, so no point for that. You can go to St. Patrick's Cathedral. You can go to um, uh, Temple Bar District. And yes, you go to Temple Bar and have a, have a pint there, which is touristy but fine. But if you have time. I go hop on the train real quick and just go out to Kilkenny or go to a smaller town and, and listen to music to, for the night and have a good time and come back and do the tourist stuff in, uh, in double. So Frankfurt in September, October, it's rainy. That's, that's a big thing there. Timothy Kishman, have you been to town? I've been to town a number of times. For those who don't know, I actually lived in Lithuania for three and a half years. I was working there. So I went to Tallinn every so often for work and for fun. Um, if you're looking for the Baltics, Tallinn's the most fun city there. It's got the most stuff to see. I feel one we're really worth going to. If you're in Helsinki, take the ferry over for the day and go and enjoy it. Oh, yes. swim. So Hampton Court Palace, if you're looking for a day trip or something to do when you're in London, Hampton Court Palace is a great thing to do. I, that's really a really fun place to go. Lots of history there you get to learn about. And they have really good interpreters. That's one thing. I find really good interpreters and docents a lot of places in the UK. Dan asking, Mark, I think you might have done a video on how to get cheap flights, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I have a video on why you don't get the cheap flights because people think you can get cheap flights anytime. You see people getting them. 
The reason why your friends get cheap flights because they're flexible when their times. They sign up for alerts. They give them great deals. They're traveling in October. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do. It's really nearly impossible to get a cheap flight for July to Europe from the U.S. Okay, it does happen. But the thing is, is it doesn't happen enough to make it realistic. And that's one thing I, I get upset when I see a lot of TikTok, Instagram, quick uh, tip videos. Like, oh, just do this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that does work, but not enough that it's something that everyone can get it. So that's why I try not to do like hacks and stuff, because if you're doing hacks, is, is it what happens if it doesn't work? Yeah, you know, it's like I, I see a lot of these people that are doing like, uh, oh, how to beat the pain for the check luggage. And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll wear extra, I mean, yeah, wear extra, some extra clothes, fine. But they're like, literally like, oh, I'll have my pillow and I'll stuff all my clothes in my pillow because no one asks. Or they'll like put extra clothes, like they'll basically make them, they'll go from skinny like Jocelyn to look like they're fat like me. Which I can understand the size wise and you're fine. But they put all their clothes in there and I'm like, that's a little disingenuous. And if you get caught doing that, is the airline going to be happy? And was it worth it to get banned from an airline so you've saved 25 bucks on a check luggage i mean that's one of those things i just don't i try not to do any of those things so yes i have had tex mex in london so my 12 years you living in europe whenever i missed mexican food i would try it everywhere i, I live because i love mexican food and uh it usually was not very good around europe but when i go to london i can find some decent tex mex there so there's that Uh, going to take the wife to see the Book of Mormon while in London, but I've not told her yet. Surprise. That's cool. Yeah, no, I've gone to a few shows over the years in on the West End of London, and it is cool. It's like the last one I went to was Matilda, which was before the Matilda like Netflix thing went all like. Blah, 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 blah. It's actually cooler in person when you see the show. Such talented children. It's such talented people. It's awesome. So let's see. Tom, there's the top. So this is the guy I was talking about with the uh, Pittsburgh stuff. He's the reason why we don't have a dose of Pennsylvania or eats of Pennsylvania because we're having too much fun hanging out. So uh, you can you can blame the milkshakes, the milkshake shop, and the the food and everything. Hope you're doing good, Tom. Hey, John, nice to see you. Yeah, live again. That's right. So I'm trying to do more of this. So the reason why I was t I last time we had a live, I said I'd be doing more of these. And I didn't. It's because we were gone, Dominican Republic, and I, the, the service at our resort we're at. I mean, I could check my email. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so that that's why I don't have any of these. But we'll try to do. We'll, we're going to try to do more because, I mean, I see all these questions going by over here, and I, I know I can't get through all of them. Um, but I want to try to help people out. So I think if I do a lot of these like shorter ones, I can get more in um, and, and answer people's questions. So. Do look for those because we'll. I mean, so I like to have them on the weekend because that's when people have more free time. But when I have free time, a lot of times it's during the week. Like Liam has a tennis lesson. Like I sit there for an hour and a half, but it has good internet. So maybe I bring my head earbuds and do a little chat. But I don't want to like annoy people playing tennis. So we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. So Christina Orlando asks, silly question. It's not silly. It's just a question. Don't worry. If I am traveling to Europe, is it best to book a one-way flight to keep my flexibility or book a multi-trip flight? Will custom immigration question one-way travels? Yes, they will question one-way travelers. Um, it depends, like, excuse me, it, it sounds horrible, but it depends where your passport's from. Like, if you're from a place that some place are required to have onward journey or a return ticket, and that even U.S. people will ask, hey, why don't you have it? If you have the money, you have the credit cards to, to show you have financial and you have a place to stay, they usually don't care, but... That's one of those things that that's one of those things that ding, hey, there's something here we need to pay attention for. Um, that that's why I usually recommend having your your flight back booked just in case. Or I mean that that that's one of those things you have to be careful with because I have seen people they did not let them in because they did not have onward transportation, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a flight. Sometimes it's a train. Sometimes it's something else. So sometimes they just ask you how long you're here for. They don't actually know your flight information. So. It really depends on where you're flying, where you're going. So I hope that helps, Christina. Charles asks, you have a luggage brand you recommend? We use Osprey pretty much exclusively. Use Osprey. Brittany, hi, Mark. Do you still use Airbnb? Not as much as we used to. So it used to be if it was three days or more, we would do an Airbnb or VRBO or apartment rental. But now with all the crazy fees they add on and like all the extra stuff, we're now, it's usually, it has to be like five days or more. We'll, we're going to do like an apartment rental. 
um, anything. They've just less than that, which do hotels, uh, just because all the other stuff. Yeah, and we 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 found you know the extra um, like cameras and stuff. I'm like, really, really? I mean, come on. Yeah, it's a little odd sometimes. So that's why we've kind of not doing as much now as we used to. Let's see. Jenny boy, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Friends are going to Europe June, July for two weeks. Cool. Starting in Copenhagen, India, and Milan. Do you recommend a sleeper car for longer train rides? So there's not as many overnight trains as there used to be. Um, if you're going from Copenhagen, you're doing the train. You take the train from Copenhagen, and the train gets on a boat and then goes to Hamburg. No, is that the Berlin one? That's an old one. But there's you're going to go. It sounds weird, but you'll go to Hamburg and go from there. Um, and from Hamburg down, there's overnight. You can do an overnight train, but they're not super comfortable and they are not super cheap. So you might be better taking a cheap airline and flying down. Uh, but I know some people like to do the overnight trains. I know, and sometimes the all-day trains. Joss and I have done those before. Um, but yeah, the sleep. I mean, it depends. Like for me, my size, those those sleeper cars are just not fun. Hey, Lori, good to see you on here. <laughs> any we had one too many traveling stories oh yeah i've got a lot of those i got a lot of those i've i'm yes there's a lot but that's probably not for this channel that's for the that's for the shorts channel or the food channel so you don't know we actually have these other channels down here uh i try to keep walter's world a little more family friendly um the uh copious amounts of adult beverages i've had over the years I guess we'd have our Whiskey Wednesdays quite a bit. But yes, Marsha, we have had a few too many, a few times over the year. <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing because I'm thinking about some of them. So, sorry. Let's see. Some more questions on here. Yeah, no, oh, I told my daughter there was no Mexican food in London. There was a Chipotle next to the theater. Oh, yeah, Chipotle's all over, man, in, in London. That's true. Five guys, too. Oh. So I was in York and I was filming and a police officer came up to me and we chatted for a really nice guy. I was like, hey, you know, where, where do you recommend I go get something? He's like, oh, if you want a burger, because they love burgers in the UK. He's like, oh, there's a five guys over there. Do you guys have that? I'm like, yeah, we do. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. Not where I live, though. So, yeah, it was very nice. I and mean, he didn't know. But, yeah, there's, there's, it would be funny what you find. So Ania, Ania asked a good question. Hi, Mark. Planning a trip to Patagonia mid-March 2024 with spouse and two kids. It's beautiful down there. It is gorgeous. Everything is so pricey. Yes, it is. Is it possible to book excursion when I get there for better deals? You can book there because they have those – those any any tour you see online, there's someone there. You can book it when you're there too. Um, sometimes it's better price. Sometimes it's not a better price. Sometimes there's not availability. I would say if there's like once you really, really, really want to make sure you do – I would probably pay up, make sure you have it, and then do the other ones when you're there. You can do that. Um, that that can be a little helpful. Like look on Be a Tour or get, get a guide and look at, and when you keep looking in their listings, you'll see who the actual people are that do it, and you can contact them directly. And sometimes they'll give you a discount because if they go through Get a Guide or Via Tour, they're losing thirty percent, so they can give you a ten percent discount just because you're paying. They're getting more money off you. You're paying less, but you're not getting more of that money. So something to think about. Let's see. Kate, hey, Mark. Thank you very much for the Super Chat, Kate. I appreciate it. Hey, Mark, did you ever make it to Michigan on your road trips with the family? Much love from Detroit and the Mitten. Uh, so I don't know Mitten, Michigan looks like a bit. Yeah, would that be your way? Yeah, I can because I'm looking at the camera here. I don't know if it's backwards or not. So so when I was a kid, we would go on our vacations this way. Whatever. Toledo, Ohio is where my grandfather lives. So that was our vacation every summer. Yeah, because, you know, world traveler, Toledo, Ohio, the place to be. Good pancakes, wherever it was. I think the place went out of business. Anyway, so we would go occasionally. That's actually the way I got into Canada. First, I went international was via Michigan. Um, actually, for me, I like Traverse City a lot. This is on, the lake, on, the lake, on Lake Michigan. Actually, Mackinac Island is always a popular stop to go. Blueberries. Great blueberries uh, there, too. Oh, well, in Michigan. Um, I have been to Detroit since I was a kid. I need to get back there. Um, so the road trips with my family when I was a kid, yes. Road trips with my kids, we have not. But that's what I well, – we'll get there. We will get there. I think the kids have a camp this year that it rotates between Wisconsin and Michigan. I think this year is in Michigan. So when the kids are doing that, I think Joss and I might explore around a little bit. So hopefully I will 
to do justice to the great state of Michigan. Let's see. Uh, Max, do you have any advice for visiting Malaga in Spain? I know it's very touristy, but can you still get a good feel of the Spanish culture? And is it good for a family vacation? So, yes, Malaga is good for a family vacation because so many families from all over Europe, and especially the UK, go there on vacation. And the uh, uh, Costa del Sol, you have all kinds of places there. Uh, Malaga, I'll be honest with you, in that area, Malaga is probably the one you're going to have the best chance of getting some Spanish culture because when you start going down to the smaller towns along the coast, there's a lot more retirees from England, Germany, and stuff like that. So you can get some. I would go up to like Ronda, Sevilla, Cordoba. You can get there on the train. That might be a little bit more, get used to more Spanish stuff. But Malaga is okay. I will tell you, the hi- like it's worth it to hike up. There's a hill with a castle on top kind of thing. You can hike up that. That's worth going. The view is really beautiful of the, the the port and stuff. So we had a good time over there. Yeah, yeah. honestly, for that part, yeah, I think you get – for that part, yes, you'll, you'll be able to get some Spanish vibes. So there is that. Hey, Stephen, good to see you, my Q-Town friend. Oh, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate the super sticker. I, I know it doesn't show up showing up here pretty, but I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, SoCal. I appreciate it. Pyro, Pyro, well, aren't you hot for all the fire? So, hey, stay warm, my friend. Strangest person you met on a trip? I don't think there's really a strangest person. There's a most interesting person, guy that, like, be, uh, like dug up the oldest city ever. I ended up getting upgraded into business class on a KLM flight when I was in college. And I'm like, literally didn't know. I'm like, there's a, there's a, there's a curtain here. I can't go past the curtain. They're like, no, no, you're over there. And I go in. I'm completely lost. Don't know what to do. The lady's like, oh, sir, let me help you. Let me take your bag. Would you like me to get out of your bag? And I'm like, uh, sure. And I sit there. Please sit down. I sit down. And the guy's got you know his work there. And, and they're like, oh, would you like your champagne? And the guy obviously knew. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. He's like, yes, he will have the champagne. And so will I, you know? And so I talked to him. And then like three months later, I saw him on that, in like in National Geographic. I'm like, oh my God, I sent Isaiah little plane. That was the coolest person. I have no idea what his name is. I can't remember. It was like 1997, maybe? Six, 96? I see, man. It's somewhere in 98. I was somewhere like late 90s. So, uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. Don't forget to like the videos. Also, if you want to subscribe to our other channels, uh, we have links down below if you want to see the food channel or if you want to see some of the other things. Uh, like the, the short video channel where, um, so the, uh, sorry, my, my thing just opened up. So like you saw the, the, um, where is it over there? The, the poll where it asks you, Hey, had you know that we, you know, that we put out travel food videos on our Walters each channel and it's 50, 50, 50 new 50 didn't. So if you do go to Walters world each, you can subscribe every win or not every Wednesday, every Sunday, we put out a new food video from different places around the world. And that's where we're putting all of our food content that's going on there. So where you know that, oh yeah, we're going to travel someplace. Yeah. I'll look up Walter's world Cancun. Like someone will come up. That's where you're going to be like, oh, Walter's world eats is where the food will be. Now we still have a bunch of our food videos. They're all like, there's still like 200 on the main Walter's world channel, but all the new ones are going on to the new channel. So like last week was what to eat New York city. Um, like I did one, what's eat the Dominican Republic. That's going to be coming out soon. Um, you know, we have a ton, there's going to be a ton coming in April for like food in, in Rome, food in Puglia, food in Malfi Coast, Northern Italy. We got all in the Milan, we got a Milan eating one already. Finland, excuse me, all kinds of stuff. So that's there. Um, we also have for like little quick videos because we, 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 we saw that the, the short, those vertical videos weren't very popular on our main channel. So we made a second channel called Walter's World Shorts. We had like short tip videos and like highlights of some of our stuff. It should probably be called Walter World Highlights, but we have that there. Um, but our vertical stuff, we have TikTok and Instagram. Our TikTok's doing very well now, so that's that's really cool to see. So Grand Theft Auto releases in 2024. Yeah, it does. Sure, Ezilla. If that happens, if that happens. For those who don't know about Grand Theft Auto, they've been promising a new game since I think I had hair and was skinny. <sighs> let's see so michelle dealing with jet lag um we actually have a few videos on dealing with jet lag just put walter real jet lag they'll be more in depth but one thing is there's there's adjusting your sleep patterns for a couple hours before you try like the week or so before you travel to get kind of close to those time periods 
Uh, one thing I always recommend is whenever you get in, stay up until at least six or seven at night. Seven at night. Seven at night, you can go, go you wake up early in the morning, but make it to at least seven. You can keep yourself awake. Dark chocolate will keep you awake in a natural way. You can have a Coke with a caffeine that'll help you keep you up. Um, if you're looking to help yourself fall asleep, though, you have uh, dried chairs you can do. But I know we have a medical doctor on here. They can give you, they can tell you more. Um, but those are some things that we do. Um, and also, sometimes we get up early, get in early in the morning. We we'll actually get to a hotel the night before. So, like, we come in, we go straight to the room, shower, get cleaned up, and go, or take like maximum hour nap and then go, especially if like get in like four in the morning, five in the morning, which sometimes happens. Ah, Leah. Leah has the eternal, eternal problem. I love to travel, but some of my, some, some of my family doesn't appreciate it as much. How can I get them to want to travel more? Thanks. You know, this is one of those things I, I've talked to people before and, and, and like, sometimes it's okay not to travel with your family. It's, I mean, you know, I'm an advocate for traveling with family all the time, but sometimes it's like, you know what? You don't want to go fine, but I want to go. And that's one thing you can explain to them. This is really important to me. You know, like our, our oldest son is 16. He doesn't always want to travel with us. Last summer, he's like, I don't want to go with you guys. I'm like, all right. So he stayed home. Now he stayed with his grandparents. He went, worked for his grandfather. He had summer school. He went to a camp. So he did his thing. This summer, he's like, yeah, I'm cool going to Greece with you guys in Israel. That'd be kind of cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad, is it? But I know that sometimes it's hard to get your other family members involved into it. Um, that's why, I like, Joss and I will travel by ourselves sometimes, too. You know, I mean, also because of work and stuff. But, you know, it, it, is, a, it is a tough thing. One thing I, I, I try to do is, like, find the place that they would like to go. Like, it, it's, sometimes people are like, I don't want to go anywhere. Like, I, I know people that are like, I don't want to travel anywhere. I'm like, really? Well, let, let's think about it. Like, find out what, what's their what's your national heritage. Like, you know, if they're if they're from the U.S., we're all from some place. Find a place that they're. And sometimes it's also get in the use of travel. You start something small. Like, hey, let's do a weekend away, or let's do one night away. You know, like I live kind of near Chicago. Hey, you know what? Let's go spend the night. Like, we we have a uh, exchange student coming to stay with us for for a weekend. We're going up to Chicago for one night. Just just you know, little things like that gets them kind of a little more used to traveling, so it's not as a big of a deal. Um, but a lot of times it's just kind of like finding that interest they have in places they want to go. And so that's why sometimes you kind of sacrifice where you want to go to get them to want to travel to a place they want to go and they have a good time, then they're more likely to want to travel again. So, oh, Philippe, hello, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you again, my friend. See, Mary headed to London and traveling by train to Paris and Amsterdam. Super easy. Any tips for train travels? Love your videos. Yes. I have not released my don'ts of European train travel. I will have, so this summer you'll get the don'ts of UK train travel, don'ts of European train travel, and the don'ts of Italy train travel. So I've got three of those coming out to help you out. Cause we have one for Finland already too. And one for us trains, one on Canadian train. No, Canadian trains come out this month. No, next month. They came out next month. The don'ts of Canadian trains. One thing I'll say, Mary, don't bother with Euro passes. Um, if you're under 26, sometimes you're running around is good, but if you're over 26, it's not worth it. Um, you look about 26 and a half in your picture. I can't tell your pictures like this small. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I haven't found them worth it. I, it is better to book. You can go online from the, where if you're going to be in one country, like you're going to Italy, you go to train Italia, buy your tickets there. Cause if you buy early, they're significantly cheaper. And if you got kids, like last summer we were buying our tickets, travel with Liam and we were getting like the Bambini pass, the family pass, and we were getting first class tickets less than second class tickets, like buying on the same day, but buying them early. So that's one thing you could look at. I would get the app, like wherever you're going to be, if you're going to be in Germany, get the Deutsche Bahn app. So then all your stuff's like on your phone. So you don't have to have all the stuff printed out because that gets kind of a headache because everything is just scanned now. They have their little beep and they check it. So it should be fine there. Let's see. Peel the onion, silly. Must do restaurant in each. Tybee is it? There's not. Well, you can go for super touristy and do the Crab Shack, um, which is still fun, but it's really touristy. I actually like AJ's Dockside on Tybee better because I like go there for sunset. That's really pretty sunsets there. Savannah um, Forty Five Bistro is good if you get their Carpaccio. I like that. Actually, is tomorrow. 
tomorrow on Walter's World, I Walter's World Eats, I believe. I can't look at it now because I'm logged in here and I have my phone. I believe tomorrow is actually the Eats of Savannah where I talk about some of the restaurants. So go peel the onion, subscribe to Walter's World Eats. Links down below. And tomorrow's video is uh, where to eat, what to eat when you're in Savannah. So uh, yeah, there's that. Where's the place? A 45 Bistro, I like that. Because that's right. That's on like the main drag downtown. So that's really good. Cotton and Rye is another really good restaurant, but you got to Uber out to it. So just so you know. Lots of Ubers there, so you shouldn't have any problem. <laughs> Kate, so glad you know what the hand is a map. I didn't realize that, that this was strange. Yeah, I always tell people, where'd you, like, where'd you grow up in Illinois? I'm like, oh, imagine Illinois is pregnant. I grew up on the belly button. They go, you can see them visualizing their head. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, I know where you're from. Kind of by St. Louis. Yeah, kind of by St. Louis. Hey, Stu, good to see you, my friend. So, Miriam, uh, we're going to Mexico City in the fall, so we'll have new videos for that towards the end of the year. Thank you, Paul, for the super chat. I see your question right below. Do you ever feel guilty for forcing the travel channel to only show ghost hunting programs? <laughs> so, Paul, I don't know if you know this. I've been in a number of magazines and newspapers commenting on – uh, the Turville, it's not the Travel Channel, it's TRVL, Turville uh, Channel, and why, they, why they're not there. One was in the Washington Post. I think that's when I finally put the, uh, the nail in the coffin that I will never get a Travel Channel show uh, was that, or any, any, any Discovery <laughs> TV show. Because um, I, I was like, look, the reason why, the reason why, if everyone why the Travel Channel is the ghost channel now, it's paranormal stuff, ghost hunters, ghost this. Occasionally there's a Bizarre Food America or something on there, which is cool. It's, I, I, it's this way. Look, people want to be entertained every single day. But people want to travel once or twice a year. So they watch travel stuff once or twice a year. But I want to be entertained all the time. So entertainment stuff makes them more money. That's why AMC, which used to be, you know, what A&E, -A -E, used to be Arts and Entertainment, the biography channel, turned into Duck Dynasty because they're just more money. I mean, I understand why they do it. I just wish they still had some travel on there. But I remember their, their CEO, I don't know if it's the CEO anymore of the Travel Channel. I don't know if that person still is. But they said, if you can fight on YouTube, we don't want to do it. So there's that. KJ around the world. Uh, Finland in June, you'll love it. I got a bunch of Finland videos. You have a good time. Helsinki's nice. May, uh, if you go anywhere, see may, the sound is always fun. Like fun. It's, it's a thing you got to do. But if you can go, if you get some time out in the wilderness or on the islands to get your own like kind of house or hut or whatever summer cottage with a sauna that's wonderful johnny do i have any plans for when we get to 1 million subscribers i honestly don't know because like our like our, our views have come back because now travel's coming back because the this is the new year and people are getting ready for summer so our views are coming back the the subs aren't coming back like they used to um but they're still doing okay i think looking at it I think I have it where we will hit a million sometime this summer. So it really kind of depends where we are. Cause like if I'm in Jordan and I'm, we're getting nearby, I'll do something then because I mean, I want to do it. Cause I remember we've done that with like, when we hit 900,000 and we did 500,000, we had friends over and it was like a, a fun thing to watch the clicker going by and stuff. But sometimes it's tough to do because it's like, we're in the middle of the forest. There's nothing going on. Like that's one thing is like, Oh, and we hit it at three o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. It's like, no. So it, it depends. Because if I can do it live, I will do it live. Uh, because I mean, you all have been there for us for years. And we've been doing this forever. Yeah, we've got, what, 220 million views on here. Like, and they're not shorts. You know, these are actual, like, long-form videos and stuff. And, you know, it's like, that would be really cool to see how far we come. And it's funny. I'm actually being interviewed. I have to feel it's an It's, you know, whenever you, get, you see interviews on, on newspapers, it's like, a lot of times they just send you the questions. So I got these questions sent to me about what's it like being a fat guy and successful on YouTube, and is it possible? I'm like, all right. Actually, I think I'm talking about a podcast of that tomorrow morning too. But it's like, you know, it it can happen if you have if you're helpful and you give good advice and you have good stuff. Anybody can be successful. That's why I love YouTube. Anybody can do this. If you if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, go start a YouTube channel. Just do it. Help people out. You won't make any money for a long, 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 long time. Don't don't do it for money. Do it because you love it. Because it takes a long time to get anywhere. Okay. Do I see myself living abroad again? Yes. Um, I'm sure we will. 
I don't doubt that at all. Hey, Imani, thank you very much. I appreciate it. My wife is out. She's in St. Louis right now, having a girls' weekend with her with Susie, a friend of ours. So they're having a nice time. They're out. They're having dinner, you know, in a big city, and I'm drinking. Hey, Pirates, if you go to Pittsburgh, go to a Pirates game. Really beautiful stadium with a great view. But I'm here. I asked Liam if he wanted to hang out with me tonight. He's like, um, I'm like, do you just want to, like, watch YouTube and play video games? He's like, well, kind of. I'm like, ah, now none of my kids love me. So, so yeah. <laughs> At least we have each other, people. Yeah, I'm glad Caleb's back in the game too. I mean, it's what I mean. It's like we all went through. We all were 15, 16 at a time. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's always it's always a fun time. Let's see. Need the UK one before June? Okay, I, I will get one for Nora. I'll get a, you one of the UK ones because I have, I have. What do I have? I have, I have. British breakfast. I have one. Let's see. There's Eats of Liverpool, Eats of York, British breakfast. There's another one. I did another one. What was it? It was there's like it was like snack foods or something. I I did for there. I have like four or five England food videos I did to kind of help out. So so you have fun. I had a fun time eating all the food trying it. So it worked out very well. <laughs> Jason wants to know how much luggage to take for 20 days in Central Europe. Medium checked one carry on, one backpack. Um, backpack and a carry on. Honestly, we, we, we do the rule of fives five tops, five bottoms, five undies, five socks. And you can rotate those in different ways to make multiple outfits and you'll be fine. Like that, that's my way to go. Where you take up space with shoes. So I try to wear a pair of like walking shoes that can work with shorts and work with pants in the summer um so that that's why i do because then it just gives me so much more space because when you're start, when you have too much luggage you make yourself a target and it's uncomfortable when you're trying to use public transportation you get frustrated and then ah, and then the next thing you know you forgot your backpack and someone's got it and it's gone so that sucks happy 43rd what nah you meant 34 i see you gotta be careful with that typing mary come on Let's see <laughs> Sam, I once spent two hours during a heat wave on a platform in York. Got fallen onto by a drunk dude. Uh, I, I I was just there. I know exactly where you were. I can see and the, the, the Costa Coffee right across the way. Oh, yes. Bunch of punch. Hey, Mark, I lived down the street from you when we were kids. Moved to, moved to Georgia and going to Savannah for Halloween. Best place to eat. Well, cool. Well, bunch of punch. I... I don't know which person that would be, but let me know. If you don't feel comfortable, it's okay. I mean, you can write me a DM somewhere. Um, yeah, so if you're going to be there, ho okay, Halloween's fun because uh, SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, has some really, uh, there's a lot of, I mean, the artists, they do a really cool job. People dressed up all over town. Lots of good parties that are going on, but the bars are all done up, so you'll have a good time. Um, tomorrow, Bunch of Punch, I've got my Eats of, of Savannah video coming out at Walter's World on at well just put youtube.com slash walters world eats it's there there's links down below you can go on there that's going to come out because i have one that's specifically on there but i was saying before 45 bistro is a nicer place like on on broughton that you can go to if you don't want to go far out cotton and rye has a changing menu all the time i like going there that's where joss and i usually go for a date when we, we go visit we're i mean we go once or twice a year to savannah um to go see that um, there, I mean, the thing is, there's so many great places. Like, if you want like southern food, like, I like Sisters of the New South, but that's one you got to go on Skidaway, and it's kind of like you got to drive, go out to it. And, you know, it's like where Target is, you know. Uh, but they got some really good stuff there. But that's all. Just tomorrow's video will be really helpful. So for that, no, Brianna, that sucks. Her trip got canceled. Uh. <laughs> Stephen Rapp asked the question that everyone wants to know. Is there an E you would not eat <laughs> on Belly Button of Illinois? I thought I invented that one. Yeah, see, see Steve, Steve and I are from the same town, so that's why we have our little jokes. I think they taught us that in grade school, Stephen. I think that was like the 
you know, when you learn how to make a map of your neighborhood and there's like the map of your town and the map of your state, like, and you live here. So I think that's where it's from. Yeah, no, there's, there's not much I won't eat. Even stuff that I'm like, not, it's like when I travel, I will eat anything just because locals eat it. I got to try it. Um, and I tell my kids, you got to try it. And Lee is a little bit more tough these days to get him to try things, but they used to be both be really good. Like, like Caleb will have a bite of anything. It's like, look, I'll try it if I don't like it. Because we don't force him to eat it all. It's like, look, just try it. It's so it's just one bite is all we ask, and you're okay. So Liam did actually really good. Last, last year in Italy, it was hilarious. Liam, because we, we do a competition when we go out to eat, who gets the best food. And last year, we were, what, four weeks in Italy, and Liam won, like, every freaking time we went for something different. He'd be like, he's like, you know what? I'm going to go with the tuna fish pasta. And we're like, what? You're Ten, what, what? And it would be amazing. He's like, I'm gonna go with the let's go with the squid ink sardine paste pasta. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, Yeah, why not? It'll be amazing. I'm like, dude, you got some skills. So boy knows his food, even though it doesn't know what it, what it says all the time. Uh Miles, do you prefer Clearwater, Florida, or Orange Beach, Alabama? Oh, that's tough. So for those who don't know, Clearwater Beach and Orange Beach, Alabama have two of the nicest beaches in the United States. Uh, for the sand and everything. Um, Clearwater, Florida is right near Tampa. It gets voted as the best beach in America all the time. Um, it is pricey. Good fish tacos there. Um, what is it? Not Rockies. What is the, there's a, there's the rock place that's right there. There's a food place we go to. Frenchies. Frenchies is the place to go eat at, at Clearwater. Uh, that, that's a nice place to go eat when you go there. I like that beach more long. It's just a little more, more stuff going on, I think, there than the Orange Beach one. If you don't know where Orange Beach, Alabama is, it's literally right next to Gulf Shores, Alabama. Um, had one of the most tasty foods I ever had. It was like a twice big potato made with a like a a fish like queso base. It was insane. It was insane. It was amazing. I don't know how they made it. It was amazing. Uh, so there's that. I'm sorry, it's Tom. You could have just wrote me, dude. You got my number. We would have told you where to go. Ooh, Quentin, going to March, going to March, going to Lisbon, March 8th. Thank you very much for the super chat, by the way. I've been to Madrid before. Is there any similarities between the two cities? How do the cultures differ? So, Madrid's flat. Lisbon has seven hills. Uh, prepare your buttocks with some good walking before you go. Um, food is different. Late night eating is the same. Um, more you have a lot more English in Lisbon. You have a lot more tourists, like percentage wise in Lisbon. It's been really overwhelmed with tourists. Um, I lived in Lisbon for five years. I love it. I, I've taught in Madrid a number of times. I, I like that. Like I love and I like. And I, I like Lisbon better um, because it's just my 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 kid was born there too. Um, but yeah, I mean you'll have a good time eating eating times uh, in Lisbon. Just be careful whenever they give you put anything on the table before you eat. You have to pay for it. If you eat it, if you don't eat it, you can just tell them, please take it away. Um, if you get the bread and butter, olives are pretty cheap. But if they give you like cheese or ham, like that's like the eight or nine euros sometimes so that can get you there. So just have a heads up. Chris Frankie, what's up, my friend? Trip to Portugal, Spain was canceled in 2020. Yeah, I'm glad it's going to be back on in October. That's awesome, my friend. Okay, Sam, what's the best thing to do in Helsinki if you only have like seven, eight hours there? Okay, so I'm going to guess you're going on a cruise through there. So there's a modern art museum kind of by the train station, the Kaisma. That's the one museum you should go to. Um, there's also, it's called the Promenade or Esplanade, Esplanade. They call it, there's this like little walkway from the harbor kind of like, well, not where the, not probably not where your cruise ship's going to come in, but there, there's a market there at the end. I mean, you can walk on the Promenade. There's usually live music there. You can grab a, a cinnamon roll. I actually have an eats five cheap eats of Helsinki to check out. I've done some Helsinki video that'll help you out. Um, if you want to do uh, uh, like take the little ferry boat over, because at the end of that pro that promenade, the Esplanade, where the market is, there's a little ferry that will take you to the Sumalina, which is uh, like a set of castle islands kind of thing you can go see when you're there. So that that should be that, that'll give you all the time because you'll be quite you, you're pressed for time with that. There's two main churches. You have the Upinski Cathedral. Uh, that's the red one, the Russian-looking one with the onion domes. That's up on the hill. You can go see that. Beautiful to go in to see the icons. There's nowhere to sit inside because that's not how it works. And then you have the big white one that I usually film in front of when I'm there. That's the Helsinki Cathedral. It's whitewashed inside, but still cool to check out. So, 
Yeah. So thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Lola, hi, everyone. So where would you move overseas when you go? You know, I, I could always go back to Lisbon. I love living there. But how much it's changed since I lived there, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't mind living, going, moving to Italy, northern Italy. We have a lot of friends up there uh, to be with them. So there is that. Ryan, have I been to North Korea? No, and I will not go. I have a family, and I'm not taking a chance. Ah, oh, Mache, missed you. It's been a long, way too long, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. So nice. That's why I love doing these. You and Brandon, you get cool people popping out you haven't seen forever. Thanks, Mache. Love seeing you, Steve, and everybody. So good. JC, when were you in Pittsburgh? We were there last summer, and I was talking about this earlier on the live feed. I actually uh, had we our don'ts our eats of Pittsburgh video is already out on the Walter Real Eats channel. But our Don'ts of Pittsburgh video has disappeared in the cloud somewhere. And I've got to find it because it's supposed to come out the week, the Wednesday after uh, March 17th, uh, St. Patrick's Day. So it's supposed to come, but it's it, I have it. I still know where it is. It's like disappeared on my computers. So got to love it. Got to love it. Uh, Dudley Dewar, this is a good question. How do you bring art pieces back from London so they don't get damaged in transport? Follow you and Jocelyn advice about souvenirs. No coffee cups. No, no coffee cups. No, don't, don't, don't waste your money on cheap stuff. Find a nice thing to bring home that you can enjoy. Like, like we have icons, we have pieces of art, we have a whole wall where you can see paintings. That's from uh, Venice at the bottom, Vicenza on the top. I've got some masks I've gotten. There's Venice stuff. We've got masks from around the world. So these things like that will wrap up a lot ourselves. Um, but if you're looking to get paintings and things. Um, we will actually ask if they're on the boards, we ask them to take them off the, the like square thing and then roll them up for us. And honestly, when we're going for a long one, Josh will take a tube of, of, uh, paper towel, the paper towel tube and slide them in there to help them. And she'll do those with carry on to bring it home. So like, we don't, we don't, if we have art, we don't put that in a check bag. That's always a carry on with us. Justin usually has a long, long shop that we boom, we'll put it above. Or if we have like seats together, that'll be what we'll put underneath like Liam's seat. Cause his feet don't touch the ground. So I hope that helps. Izzy. Hey Walter, I'm a tall and large size American. Me too who is scared to travel abroad, don't be, and stick out like a sore thumb. You won't. Go to Scandinavia. You'll be fine. We fit in just fine. Our other countries is accessible to people of size. So I won't lie to you. Some places like Japan, it is not for husky people. Southeast Asia, not for husky people, okay? Australia, you're fine. New Zealand, you're fine. South America, I find a lot easier, especially like Brazil, uh, no problems at all. Like, you know, um, Europe, I find Germany's fine. Eastern Europe's fine. UK is fine. Ireland is fine. Scandinavia is really fine. Like when I go try to buy clothes and I go there, if I'm in Scandinavia, I never have to worry. I always can find something. Like they're, they're going to have, like not even, I didn't have to go to like the fat man store. I can go to like a normal store and they'll be like, oh yeah, we got, we got a few exercise for you, buddy. So there's that. So don't let it stop you. Um, but do know like when you're going to be booking your tickets to plan, like what seat you want to have, check out the airplanes. You can actually call. And some airlines will actually help you know what sites, what things the better one to go. My dog just made a weird sound. Sorry. Um, let's see. Clueless puppy owner. I love that name. That is awesome. I would follow you if you had a puppy right there. <laughs> I discovered your channel when I was in Amsterdam last September. After that, I used your videos while I traveled through Bruges, Normandy, and Paris. Thanks for my Montreal, Canada. Oh, thank you very much. That's really nice of you. Thank you. Ah, it just jumped on me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I apologize if you've been sending me questions because it like jumps and then I have no idea where we were. So overnight ferries in Greece, just by the seat. You don't want to try to find a place. You don't want to think you're going to sit at the table all day. I've had to do that before. It sucks. It sucks. And they'll have rooms you can get or you can get like seats like on an airplane but they're like eight across sometimes or ten across so it's not really super comfortable so is that uh el salvador so we were there right before coat like honestly it was like they were masked up at the airport that's when we knew things were gonna happen and everything shut down like the next week um we do have a few el salvador videos that go on there one thing i like you the surfing there is fantastic uh they do like you know like world competitions there for that uh nidia do you have videos on cruises i have a don'ts of cruise travel video um, what's a no for cruise travel safety video. And then I have a love and hates of European like riverboat cruises coming out closer to summer. So hopefully those can help you out. 
Thank you again, Stephen. I appreciate the super chat. It does help out. Honestly, all the members, all of everyone here, like your likes and stuff, it does help. I just want to say thank you for all the support. You all are awesome. I just want to say thank you for all that. <laughs> Sorry, I saw this. Ryan, I underestimated the toilets in Japan. Yes, they when they, when you put it on high pressure, it'll it'll get you. Uh, we love it so much. Actually, our master bedroom actually has a Japanese toilet seat uh, that you can buy. It's like two hundred bucks, but it's like amazing. Jocelyn loves it. Um, if you're a bigger person, they're not as much fun, but they're still there. Deli Dude, right? That info helped a lot. Thank you. You're very welcome, my friend. Oh, Miles is going there to Japan. Lucky guy. So Rosado in here. Hey, good to see you again. Thank you for the super chat. What are good cities to visit in Australia other than Sydney and Melbourne? I like Adelaide, to be honest. Like the big, huge ring around the city with the green. That was just, I just love that. Um, if you're going to go up to Karen, Karen, I never, I never say it wrong. But Red Cliffs, you're going by the Great Barrier Reef. That's kind of cool to check out as well, uh, city wise. But yeah, like those would be, those would be the ones I would recommend. Monica, you're driving from Porto to Lisbon. Pretty straight shot. They'll tell you to not drive so far. It's like a three hour drive. You can take a train too. Not, not there's but there's plenty of places to stop on the way, so you'll be fine. Tiaran and Murray, you were a lifesaver for my trip to Berlin in January. Thanks a lot. Quick, quick question: What is the best time of year to visit Prague? Honestly, any time of year is good to visit Prague. It's just in the summer; it gets really packed with tourists. I like spring uh, because the flowers are blooming and people are more excited because like the coldness is gone. That's really nice. Also, Christmas time is really good. If you go early December. Because uh, once you get close to Christmas, it gets really packed with travelers that ever off. But like, if you're like, you know, like the fifth through like the fifteenth of December is really nice too, because all the markets are open and it's really, really like comes alive. So, some things I, I really do like. So, my thoughts on the Flix bus? Hey, it's a good option, cheap option to get around Europe on a bus. Takes a lot longer, but you, with the prices, it's hard to really beat. Let's see. All right, RG, going to Portugal this summer. Nice. Looking for ideas for east of Lisbon day trips, not west. <laughs> oh, you could go to like, well, you, I mean, you had the ones on the city lines like Estoril, Queen, uh, Estoril, and uh, Cascais. Uh, Sintra obviously is very popular. Evora is a day trip you can do. See the Bone Chapel there. Uh, worth going to see eat the food there. Is uh, Pogo and Tejana is really good. Um, I'm, I'm doing this in my mind. You got Tomar where the Knights Templar were. There's a thing there. You can go check out their, their castles. Really cool. Uh, Obidus to have the, uh, Jijinia, the, the, the cherry liquor stuff and chocolate cups, cute town to go check out. So those are some ones I'd recommend. And going back to Paris in September with two 30 somethings, any advice? Um, food will be a good thing. Um, Let's see, you're going to September. Okay, so, so September, people are back in school, so you don't have as much worry about. Yeah, you, you'll be and you'll be set up with as less tourists as almost possible, uh, just because that's like everyone's getting back into going to school mode because September first is like the first day of school in a lot of countries in Europe. So, like, no one's even thinking about a vacation or a weekend away yet because the kids just went back to school. So you're gonna be, you'll be fine there. Uh, the two thirty somethings. One thing I would say is like, are you are they your friends or just the two of you? Um, I I would look at doing some fun activity like maybe take a painting class or a cooking class, uh, something that gives you a little bit more of a cultural kind of thing instead of just doing museum after museum after museum. Throw a cultural thing in, and you can find those Airbnb experiences. There's all kinds of get get your guide. There's all kinds of stuff you can do via tour, and they'll, you can find. I mean, I think you should recommend try to find the people and book them direct, but you can look these things up. I know uh, Jocelyn and Caleb did a paint in, in open air and they painted Notre Dame. We actually have it hanging in our, in our living room right over there. Um, while Liam and I went and did a macaron class, you know, so there's those things there. And I find that those really help you get to know the culture nice, nicely. Like we did a, a cooking class in Morocco and yes, it was, we learned how to cook, but they talked about the culture so much. It was like, wow, I really, I really feel like I know a lot more. You know, we did the same thing in Costa Rica. Jocelyn did one and I did another one in Paris as well but she's not here i can't ask her which one it is but that 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 those are some things i would recommend just because then you have like another experience together as opposed to just another 
tourist experience. So, oh, it's family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's good. Cause then you can talk about, yeah. Remember when La 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 messed up the, the, the torte flambe uh, and she just turned into flambe. Uh. So some fun stuff there. Wow. Thank you very much for the super chat. I, 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 thank you. I, nice. What's the dumbest thing you've had confiscated from you by customs? So I don't know if it was customs that did this. Um, so years ago, so I used to live in Lithuania. I lived there for three and a half years. It was quite quite a long time I lived there. And so I was coming home. I had a big suitcase and I mean, this was back in the day. I had a big suitcase and another like medium-sized suitcase coming back. Big suitcase wasn't there when I got off the plane. Took about a month for the big suitcase to show up. Showed up, no wheels. Wheels are gone. It's obviously been opened up. Only things that were like and nothing was folded. It was all like you can tell they just shoved stuff back in. And the thing was weird. It's like one, our our family Bible, my family Bible was gone. That sucked. And then the other thing that was missing, and this was weird. You know the DVD cases used to have like in the early two thousands before we all streamed everything. I had a DVD case, and in there I had like a couple of seasons of The Simpsons, movies, all kinds of. Some of it was. Like real DVDs, I got at you know Sam Goody, you know, or Walmart or something. And then some of them I got at you know the market in Russia, which maybe they were legit. I don't know. It looked kind of real. Anyway, the best thing was is when I got back, the CDs weren't in the slit, like in the the slits, you know. They were just stacked together and put in there like a pile. They went through and only took season three of The Simpsons. Because it was the only official DVDs I actually had, because everything else was like you bought from the market kind of stuff, and I just cracked me up. So I'm like, "You're kidding me!" They only took season three, the legit ones I bought, like for real. That's the only one they took. So that was that was <laughs> that crap. That would crack me up. So that was the dumbest thing that got confiscated. I don't know who it was, but uh, yeah, that would be that would be a thing there. So thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, Risotto, that is amazing. Excuse me, thank you so much for that super chat. Monica, thank you. Send you a copy now. Can't wait to beat Portugal. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Chess, food in Miami. I actually have a food in Miami video. Yes, I think I do on the, the Eats channel. Or go to my, uh, the don't, just put don'ts of Miami Walters World. I talk about the food in that video too. Um, one thing I'll say is um, don't think Little Havana is the only place to get good Cuban food um, because you'll find good Cuban food all over, uh, not just there. So don't feel like that's the only place to go. That's one thing I really saw with the uh, – with it with, was that. So, yeah. Thank you, Monica. I appreciate it. That is very nice of you. I hope we could help out a little bit. Rosie Sky, recommendation for Croatia. Okay, Croatia people, if you go there, they've been having tours for thousands of years. They know how to take care of tours. It doesn't matter what language you speak, they speak it. You'll be fine. And the thing is, the food, you like Italian food, they've got the pasta that you're going to love. Oh, you want more of a Germanic, Austrian kind of food? Don't worry, they have that too. No, no, I want something more Serbian, Slavic kind of food. They've got that too. They've got it all. Like, you will eat so well. If you get the beef, get whatever sauce they offer, say, yes, I want the sauce. Because, yes, yes. And yes, okay, because the food, food in Croatia was nice. I have a few videos going through there. There's so many cute, like if you go to Dalmatian Coast by Dubrovnik, you had a lot of stuff there, but it's not just Dubrovnik. There's so much to see in Croatia. I mean, it, it, it's got the coastlines, it's got it's got mountains, it's got cultural sites, it's got Roman, you know, uh, Pula. It's a Pula that has it. The the there's a Colosseum there. I mean, it's it's really cool, really cool. Jim and Harriet, thank you again for the super chat. What will be your top five favorite cities in Portugal and how's Jocelyn doing? Jocelyn's doing good because she's out eating and drinking at a nice place in St. Louis and I'm drinking my ice water. I'm trying to get healthy for this summer so I can enjoy myself a bit more. Um, five favorite cities in Portugal, Lisbon, Porto, um, Obidus, which is kind of by Lisbon, um, I like going to Lagos and the Algarve in the south because that's where you can take the boats to go to the grottos. That's really cool. And Guimarães. Guimarães is it's a day trip you'd take on like the local train from Porto out. It's obviously east of Porto, uh, going towards the the Dao 
and then Dow River and not Dow River. Um, you're going up the river that way, but Gibraltar is actually the, the, where that where Portugal was founded, and it's a stone city, so it's really kind of cool to check out. So uh, I hope that helps. Let's see, Monica. Hello again. Any more good tips? Do Southern Spain, or is it Sevilla and Granada, then back to Madrid before heading to X? Okay, so when you're in Sevilla, hop off the train in Cordoba, and you want to go to the La Mesquita. And it's an old, it's a mosque that they built a cathedral in the middle of because they turned the, the mosque into a cathedral. That is, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is so cool. I'm actually taking students there this summer because it's so cool. We're actually staying in Cordoba. Um, we love Cordoba. It's fantastic. You'll love that. But Granada is great. So like Sevilla will have a lot more tourists than Granada or Cordoba will. Um, and you have a lot more people that go there to learn languages and go to school there. So it's a different vibe. Granada, you definitely feel more like Spanish kind of stuff than in Sevilla. But Cordoba is a nice little mix. So that would be something I would say. So, All right, Eric, heading from the UK in May. What's your preferred way of getting from Heathrow to our hotel in London? I always just take the tube into town um, that way because the Heathrow Express is costs a lot more. Uh, but it depends where your hotel is because you might go in and then switch to go someplace else. That's what it really depends. Cause sometimes you're like, I don't want to spend the hour and a half getting there. I want to do it like a faster way. So you could just do the Heathrow express in, but I always take the tube in cause it's like five pounds instead of like 20 pounds or something. Uh, so there is that. Um, Sam, I have not been to Lords sadly. So, See, right, great coon place, Key Largo, right on the main road. Yeah, no, key, yeah, there's all the keys. There, there's such great food down, especially even in Key West. There's so much good food. You, you can't go wrong down there. Felix, your work saved my skin a lot of times. I'm glad I could. That's one thing I love here. I actually got to help people. One question why a lot of Europeans and North Americans travel to Asia and the North South America? I asked the same thing. It pisses me off. South America, Central America is amazing. We have hundreds of videos from Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Ecuador. Where else do we have in South America? There's, we have some more from other places too. I used to live down there. I love it down there. And like in Central America, like we have what Guatemala, El Salvador, Belize, uh, Costa Rica, Nicaragua. Yeah, like those ones we have. I think we just have Honduras and Panama. And like people like don't go to Latin America. And then people get mad at me, like, why don't you have any videos of Central or South America? I'm like, we do. We literally have hundreds that people and people just don't because they're looking for Europe videos and stuff. And I don't know. I that's why I try to do as many Latin America videos. Sorry, my, my dog's here right now. Say hi, Brig. He wants me to let him out real quick. But that's the thing, is like I I don't know why people more people don't go because it's affordable wise, people wise. If you've got kids, kids like going to Central and South America because there's a lot of outdoor activities which makes it a lot more fun for them. Okay, so that is nice. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to let my dog out real quick and let Brig out, and I'll be right back. Come on, Brig. So, come on. You want to go out? Let's go. Yeah. Hey, uh. And I'm coming back. Yeah. I heard him by the door. And it's post dinner time, doggy time. If you have dogs, you know what that means. So yeah, <sighs> let's see. Tyus, more itinerary videos really value your info. Are any itineraries for twenty five days in Europe? Only in Greece. So what I usually tell people, they're, they're first like if you want to hit the big city ones, I usually say, you know, get a multi city ticket so you fly in one and out the other. But you go into London, then Paris, Prague, Rome, or Prague, Munich, Rome. That's like an easy big city one to do, but there's a lot of other things you can do. Like if you want to do a central Europe one, Budapest, um, Bratislava, Vienna, Salzburg, Munich, you can, or, or sorry, then go to Prague. You have that. That's a really good one to do. So uh, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. And now my computer is not moving. Hopefully you all can hear me. I, I don't know. My, my computer's freezing up on me. So there is that. Oh, yeah, the new Elizabeth line. There it is. Okay, are we moving again? Okay, good. Okay, nice. <laughs> when will you sponsor trip for your online folks? You know, if you notice, before COVID, there was a lot of YouTubers that were doing trips, like, with their with their groups. And uh, we were approached by a number, of, a number of people to do that. And 
one of the things I like to do is I like to give the knowledge so people can do their own travels on their own. So you don't have to hand the handholding. That's why I try to do with our videos. I'm sure one day we'll probably do some, some uh, cruises or something or some travel things because uh, honestly, I know YouTubers that stopped making YouTube videos and just started doing the, the trips, you know, cause it was more economically viable for them. But for me, I just want to help you travel better. So let's see day trip to Vienna or Innsbruck coming from Munich. Vienna is not a day trip from Munich. Innsbruck's about, they're both about three hours. If you're looking for a day trip from Munich, I would do Salzburg. So. Ooh, Brazil or Spain. They're both fun. You can't go wrong. Monica, you're going to put my kids through school. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's really nice of you. Thank you, Monica. Amy, I'm traveling to Turks and Caicos in early May. Aside from beach, eat, sleep, repeat, what are you writing for my home and myself? Oh, for a two-year-old. I was like, oh. Uh, so for the two-year-old, if you go down to Sandals, um, they have a lot of like activities for little kids. One thing I would do is because stuff's rather pricey there, I would throw in like some beach toys. I just go to the dollar store if, because may they already have the dollar store will have, you know, dollar general, whatever will have some of those beach things, get that for the two year old. So they can just sit and play when you're there. Also, you, you know, I always say like try to do carry on only, but the amount of, if you're going to be there for a little while, the amount of money you'll save by checking a bag with bug spray and uh sunblock especially for the little one it's going to pay for itself because the stuff that's there is it can be a bit much so be aware of that um yeah the two-year-old is going to run around on the beach and have a nice time um but there's not i mean that's the thing is turns the there's just not much there like I, we i don't do well not doing things and so it took we were there for a week i think or six days or something like that it was like the fifth and a half day i was finally like okay I can lay around and do nothing because it was like driving me crazy. So, so Sherry's asking, we're thinking about going to UK. How are they um, being up to date on COVID vaccines? No one's asking right now. No one's asking for anything about vaccinations. Um, honestly, we've gone all over the place. No one's, no one's really asking. Um, let's see. So Dave wants to know, Canadian dollars are credit cards in Vancouver for a day. Just use your credit cards. People are taking it everywhere. After after the pandemic, it's just cards, cards, and more cards. That's what we're going to do. Ah, bring us back in there. So, Monica, yes, the Alhambra is well worth it. Yes, 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 yes. You have to. If you don't do that, Jocelyn will not talk to you. Okay? But I just hope, I pray that they have the new guides, the new guides that are there. Because, the, like, I've been there a couple times. And the, the audio guides they have were like from Washington Irving's description of it. Yes, that Washington Irving, like Head of Swordsman guy. That they that he, they were using his text for it. I'm like, oh man, I know they have new ones now, but I still remember that like one time I was there. One of the times I was there. But yeah, Granada, I love Granada. Granada's great. I was gonna take my students to Granada, but how things worked, it was easier for us to do some uh Cordoba parts. So we have that. Ah, oh, Puerto Rico, Rebecca. Nice. Love Puerto Rico. We had such a good time there last year. Had a Portugal in April, Braga and Porto. Nice. Hey, and if you're, and if you're looking for another spot, uh, Rebecca, Guimarães is another nice one. So there is that. Thank you, Monica. All right. I am going to head off because the dog came back in and somehow he opened the door. He's very talented that way. He opens the door and wakes me up. So it's very, very strange, especially when you're in the bathroom. You're like, hey, we have guests. Why are you opening the door? Awkward, awkward. So anyway, I am going to take off for the night. Thank you everybody for all your comments and questions and the super chats and the members and the, you know, the, the things. If you want to check out our other channels, just go down below for the Walter's World Eats, for the food stuff, the shorts channel. We have like little tip videos, the business, what I do for my life. I'm actually a marketing professor. I have education stuff for that. All kinds of things to help out. But I just want to say thank you everybody uh, for hopping on. We'll do more of these. Don't worry. Throughout the spring, uh, we'll be doing a lot of these, get people ready for the summer. And then once travel starts going, we'll be doing some of these from on the road as well. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Love you all. Thank you so much for all your support. Stay out of trouble. Be good travelers, which I know you all are. So I'm not really, I'm not too worried about you not being good travelers because you would be watching otherwise. All right, people. Have a great one. Thanks for everything. Have a good night. Bye.